How are you, George? Good. Yourself, Ronnie? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Mate, this thing is so sick. I've been looking at it for quite some time. We finally got you a modified. <laughs> Firstly, tell us, what is it, actually? It's a 1996 Suzuki X90 that I have chopped the back off, turned it into a ute, and extended the wheelbase on. I understand you've done most of the work on this. Pretty much all the work, except, except for paint and panel. I've got a lot of questions coming your way. What are we set up for as well? Pretty much just getting away for the weekend, you know, one or two nights. Obviously, it's, it's not a long-distance sort of car, but it's, it's great for getting away on the weekend. This episode of Modified is brought to you by the Terrain Tamer eStore, the leaders in four-wheel drive replacement parts. So if you're building a four-wheel drive right now, they're probably worth checking out because they will have what you need. All right, guys, let's get back to the episode. Bar work bash plates. Now, something very interesting going on with all the exterior of the bar work. Stay tuned for that. But for now, you were pointing out something underneath that you changed before you did any of the conversion on this vehicle. So I just pretty much put this uh, little cross member in here that goes between the front um, wishbone mounts. And they're just braced up on the outside as well to thicken up the outside pieces. Something that really should have been in there from factory, I think. It looks yeah. factory. Yeah. <laughs> Solid steel. <laughs> yeah. This is another one that I'd done before I actually converted it. I had the bull bar and the winch on there um, before. So yeah, it's a 5 mil plate that goes all the way around with um, tube wings. You're not messing about then. What's that? Five mil plate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Winch? Yeah, it's a worn Xeon 8S. So it's 8,000 pounds? Yeah. That'd be more than enough for the weight of this vehicle. Yeah, right? definitely. The car. What, what does it weigh, do you know? 1560, with like loaded up with everything with wow. uh, full fuel. That is so light. Yeah. Can't so. wait to see this thing off road. <laughs> Mate, it must be pretty handy being able to do all this kind of neat work here. And I like the way you've uh, actually attached these as well. It looks quite clean. Yeah, they're just little roll cage joiners, um, so they're very strong still, but um, yeah, it's great for disconnecting, and it's, they look pretty neat rather than the uh, big clamps you get on the outside of the tube. Yeah, that's, so. that's true. And where you chopped the vehicle, like, what did it actually look like before? Because it, kind of, it tapers off here, I can see. Yep. Like uh, it was pretty much looked like the same kind of proportions uh, of the, the bonnet, like as on the, the boot. So well. it's very, it was quite short at the back. It only went to probably, um, probably around here. Okay. It kind of ended, so it was very, very small. And it came with a target top, you obviously didn't do that? No, um, the target top's factory, yes. Yeah, so That's made cool. It from factory. Yeah, very cool for the summer days. Let's talk about the tray, which all the bar work attaches to. What's the dimensions? Uh, it's 1825 to 12, by 1200 deep, so. Alley or steel? Yeah. It's all steel, yeah. I guess you can get away with steel on this because it's such a small tray, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. and just. Oh, I just like the idea if I hit, hit something on the tracks, you know, I'm not going to worry about folding in all the alley, the alley yeah. sides and stuff like that, yeah. I see you made a good choice of fridge there. Yeah, yeah, I just really like the look of those as well as, you know, being waterproof is great, not having to stress about that. I'm surprised you haven't painted it red though. <laughs> <laughs> it would match, but, um, you know, maybe, maybe in the future. Like it matches the alley floor. <laughs> yeah, this is true. One spare wheel. Yep. And this is basically all your camping gear when you go? Yeah, I, I travel pretty light. Like, I don't, I don't need too much, you know, only going away for a couple of nights at a time maximum. So, yeah, just got my chair, little table and swag. 20 litres in the back, what's the yep. fuel size? <laughs> only a 40 litre tank down there. 40 litre so, tank, okay. Yeah, only take 60 away with me. Wow, that's an extra 50%. Yeah. it's <laughs> <laughs> a significant Makes amount. Makes a big it? difference, yeah, half a tank on the back of the tray, yeah. What's your range on, on this car? Uh, it's about... Normally about 550 k's with the 60 litres. So That's pretty good. It's not too bad, yeah. I yeah. wish I had that much on <laughs> 60 litres. Yeah. So I chose uh, the conveyor belt mud guards for a couple of reasons. The main one being just because I want to like it, be able to get them out of the way when I'm off-road. So I just carabiner them up the top there like that. And they was way out of the way. I don't have to worry about bending or snapping the chains or anything like that. Uh, not to mention as well, get to rid of a bit of the road noise because the rubber acts as um, like a sound ender around the tyre. Yeah, and you don't get the ting of... Um, of rocks hitting it either because it's you know going straight into rubber. And I guess you saved about 20 kilos too. Yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. Save a bit of weight, yeah. Ladies and gents, it's time for suspension. George is going to run us through the drive line and suspension, in fact. There's a bit going on with the suspension. I've got um, coilover springs in there that fit nicely into the stock Vitara coil hats. I got BP51 shocks with um, that mounted on the front control arm, so there's a good amount of travel on them. Custom triangulated three link in the back, so long arms on the front, they're about 1.1 metres long, with a decent like four, 500 long tri um, triangle piece in the rear to really get the flex going and get rid of the panhards so we don't get any side travel on there. So the front suspension doesn't have as much going on. Um, pretty much just got three inch uh, 
shock struts on the front, some modified Land Cruiser springs, and I've actually modified the front arms so that it pushes the wheelbase forward a little bit on the front just to stop the tyres scrubbing from the inside. The driveline and the chassis, uh, the driveline's not too modified. Mostly it's just that it's got a longer tail shaft in there because it's got the wheelbase extension, uh, 270mm longer, the same as a long wheelbase Vitara. And it's got a Grand Vitara front diff and CVs just to make it a bit stronger as well. The chassis extension, as I said, was uh, 270mm and it's all fish plated the whole way along with um, a little bit of an extension on the rear overhang as well, just to get the tow bar further out from underneath the tray. So fish plates are basically just um, race plates that go the whole way along the chassis, just to stiffen it up a little bit, because um, it's actually quite a thin chassis on these cars, because they're so small, as well as it's got some gussets on the back as well, just to really stiffen up the chassis on this car. Tires and wheels on this, I've just got 30s by uh, nine and a half by 15 inch rims on it. Just, they're, they're a pretty small tyre, but they are, they're good for what, what this car is really, which it's just, it's, it's, it's trying to keep it all really light without putting too much pressure on any of the driveline. Um, I went for a muddy, just because I, I don't really use it for much just street driving. It's more just when I'm using it, I'm using it to go to go away camping for the weekend. So I just thought it'd probably be worth it to make it a little bit more capable. Uh, they're not too bad, the BFGs. They're a little bit noisy. Yeah. The rims are, are negative 25 just to give it a bit more width, so, because the Suzuki's are pretty skinny, you know, give it a bit more stability off-road. When it comes to tyre pressure, being such a light vehicle, pressures would you run this on the highway? Highway around 32. Beach runs? Uh, about 12, trying to keep it pretty low, yeah. How does it go on the beach? Just It's good on the beach, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got quite a high low range, so like you can just put it in uh, low range on the beach and it goes, it goes nice, especially with a lot of ground clearance as well. And, yeah. What it's about good. this rocky terrain here and the other weekend when you had to it out for a bit of a bash? <laughs> when I blew the CV, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes good, but it really needs low range gears and a, a locker would help in the back. Like it, go, it goes good though. Yeah, sure. And the tyre pressure you'd use for this kind of stuff? Probably around 15. Under the bonnet. It's quite a small bonnet. The battery is quite cute, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty adorable, yeah. What size is the motor on this? Uh, it's a 1.6 litre, yeah. Fuel injected motor. It's the same as in, in all the old Vitaras. Does it go pretty good? It goes good for what it is, yeah. yeah. For a 1.6, it does go pretty good. You mentioned that your low range is a bit high, is that what you Yeah, saying? well, the Vitaras came out with a bit higher uh, low range than like a normal four wheel drive would come out at. So it's, it's putting the bigger tyres on it as well doesn't help that. Yeah. I've done like uh, the gear ratios to make it a little bit lower, but... Oh, you just, have? Yeah, yeah, but um, it's, it's still not, not okay. what I'd want. But probably ideal for beaches though, eh? Yeah, it's great for beaches. Yeah. In low range on a beach, it goes really good. Yeah, five-speed manual. Uh, talk us through what you have done to the motor. I'll, I'll take it's not too much. Not too much, because um, it did only have... It, it still only got 108,000 Ks on it. Oh, so really? It's, yeah, yeah, it's... I only got it with like 79,000 Ks on it a few years back, so... I don't really, really want to mess around with too much of it, you know, yeah, keep it going cool. as long as I can. All I've really done on it is got the little K&N filter there and got a extractors that go out to the stainless exhaust. Tango 78, seeing if there is a Sierra X-Ray 90 out there. Over. There sure is. Righto, well, Sierra X-Ray 90. What kind of lighting setup have you got? I haven't got too much on this as I try to avoid night driving as much as I can. So I pretty much just got a light bar on the front, the LED headlights, and then I got two side lights on either side just for lighting up campgrounds. Oh, and the reverse lights that are connected to my reverse, so they only come on when it's in reverse gear. Copy that. Your light bar on the roof, it's sitting quite forward. Does it shine into your windscreen? It doesn't because the, the bonnet's actually very slanted downwards. I can't even see the top of the bonnet from where I'm sitting right now. So it's very good for that. And I've got the, um, the antenna on the front wrapped in heat shrink so that it doesn't reflect off that either. Copy. So Sierra X-Ray 90, what are you talking to me on right now? Uh, it is an 80 channel TX. 3500 uh, GME. Very nice. And you find that the range is pretty good with the antenna you have on your bull bar? Yeah, I find it's really good. I don't normally have like big um, distances between our convoys, so it's, it's not... It doesn't really get tested too much, but even when we go down different tracks sort of thing to like test out where we're trying to get to, we've always been able to contact each other, so yeah, it's pretty good. 
Roger that. This is Tango 78. Out. Over. Sorry, over and out. Not out and over. Well, there's not a lot of room in there. Well, actually, there is a fair bit of room. For... Yeah, it, it's not too squeezy. Um, it, it's got, it lacks a little bit of headroom, but I'm six foot and I sit in here pretty nicely, to be honest. The door is huge. Yeah. <laughs> this is a huge yeah, door. Yeah, you man. just pointed out, I've never really noticed that one too much, but um, yeah, comparing it to your troopy, it's yeah. yeah quite a bit bigger. And I think where, where that camera sort of cut here, it looks like you're sitting in a sports car. <laughs> the slowest sports car around, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to run us through what you've done to the back? Because I really. Like that that's really clever, that storage you've got behind. And yeah. there's a whole heap of stuff behind your seat. So just just tell us sort of what you keep in here, because you are limited for space. But Very limited, yeah. You've got a fair bit of hidden space. Yeah, Go yeah. For yeah. It. Pretty much just when I chopped it, like I chopped halfway through the boot. So I've still got quite a bit of room behind here. So that's got like all of my recovery and um, tooling equipment and stuff like that in there. So that's pretty good having that room. Um, I can get most of my stuff in there and then just have pretty much food in the front behind the seats. So I've just got behind the seat, just got my like compressor and tools and stuff like that behind there. Um, just got a bag full of a little bit of stuff, my little radio there. I got the subwoofer and then um, my axe behind there as well. So just one more thing, the chop of this vehicle, I don't want to say the chop was easy, but it was an easier chop, right? Definitely, yeah, to... because you didn't have to worry about the other half of the chop. Like I didn't have to worry yeah. about the back window, um, didn't have to worry about interior at all really. I just put some sound ending in the back of there. That's how you got your boot space? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Good amount of room still. All right, we're on. Cool. Q&A. Yep. Why red? Uh, it was already red before. It was a bit darker of a red, and um, honestly, the guy from the paint shop recommended that colour. So I was like, F it, yeah, that, that looks good. <laughs> and I'm really, really happy with the colour. It pops really nicely against the black tray, so... Yeah, it definitely really pops. With it. Shooting that car today, just, I think you probably heard me so yeah. numerous times, this car pops. Yeah, <laughs> especially out in the bush, yeah, where it's all just a sea of green. I'm actually spewing it out the 79 here so we can get the photo next to each other because <laughs> they're kind of, yeah, no, red and good, black yeah. and black and red, you know? Yeah, yeah. Why a Zook? Um, honestly, I was looking for a daily when I still had my GQ Patrol and this came up with like pretty low Ks on it, like stock just, it was a pretty good daily for, I think one or two years I used it for a daily. Um, and then I ended up having more fun when I took that out rather than my GQ. So I sold the GQ and turned that into my wheeling car and got another daily instead. So yeah, and I slowly kept modifying and modifying it until it's what it is now. <laughs> it's fairly bloody modified, I'd say. Like, <laughs> what advantages did you find in this vehicle and more fun compared to the GU? Oh, sorry, think, GQ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I always just found it broke quite a lot, but that's because I was doing stupid in it to be honest. I think in Perth as well there's not there's a lot of flat stuff there's not any really hardcore stuff so I like the patrol on like the 35 inch Simexes with bead locks and stuff like that and it went through everything really well mm. but having a smaller car that was more of a challenge actually was a lot more fun. That wheelbase is really good. Yeah. yeah. So when you stretched it to suit the the longer yep. Vitara yep. Um, that was so all the components were easier to put in? Yeah exactly that way I didn't mm. have to worry about the tail shaft um, really and it's just because I stretched the front a little bit too just by changing the A-arms and it's about a 99 inch wheelbase so it's just a really good wheelbase that I wanted. I feel like you got a lot more control on and off road. Um, I didn't really like how short it was before at like 88 inches. Did it feel sketchy yeah. going up tall things on an angle? Yeah and stuff? definitely the, the back wanted to overtake the front. It still does a little bit because it is quite a short wheelbase still but um, yeah it feels a lot more confident. I feel a lot more confident in it now. What's the best thing about this vehicle? Oh, honestly the attention. <laughs> you had a lot of attention in it because it is pretty unique. Um, and I just, I really like that, that it's something different on the road. It's not the same for all drive you see. Top three mods to this vehicle. Ute conversion, uh, really good. Just, it was pretty useless before, just having a small boot and I had like a little rack on the boot. Like it was just, I couldn't really do it without it. So that, that's the biggest one. Then the chassis extension as well, just gives you a bit more room on the tray space and just improves the overall car. I think the look of it and all that. Um, the third one, having that, that high suspension, getting being able to not, not clip rocks and stuff like that. So if you're going to do another mod to this vehicle, what would it be? Either a rear locker and low range gears, but ideally both. Plans moving forward with this vehicle? <laughs> uh, no plans, unfortunately. Um, I've got a Prado on order, so I will be looking at selling it pretty you're soon. You're going to sell actually. that? Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? 
it's a it's a hard decision but just because i want something i can travel long distance with and i need the, i need a bit more space it is a really cool weekend a car and i do like it a lot but oh man well whoever ends up buying that they're going to be i reckon super stoked yeah. you got a prado coming right yeah yeah is it red? <laughs> it's not. I did think about it, but um, I decided to go for the peacock black this time. Thanks for bringing it on, mate. Thanks for coming no on. Right, cheers. Yeah. Appreciate it. No worries. And uh, maybe we might see George again in the future with his Prado. I mean, if he's done this to, to that car, if we can only imagine what might happen to the Prado maybe. in the future. I think the Prado will be a lot more tame, but yeah, we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Yeah, next minute, it's a single cab. <laughs> do you don't, no, I don't need the temptation. <laughs> Thanks again to George for bringing this epic vehicle on for Modified, but also a big thanks to our sponsors at Terrain Tamer East Store, keeping the lights on and making this happen. So we'll see you guys in the next episode of Modified, and I'll see you next week as well. Cheers, guys.